right. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go. You seated yourselves and called for a stein of the finest mead. Your partner, Rani, is in a particularly good mood. Quaffing the bar's spirits buoyed your spirits. When things are lively, Rani will recount a certain tale. You were an adventurer just starting out and didn't know right from left. It was then that you first met. Shall I open that door for you? The rogue Rani inquired, after appearing from out of nowhere. He thought that it would be a simple matter to take advantage of your naivete and pocket some coin. It's my turn. Done. Voila! Enemies! You've been journeying under mutually beneficial terms. 
You handle combat, and Rani handles locks. You came to Hydland as an adventurer. Like many of your fellows, you strove to challenge the dangerous labyrinths here. The labyrinths were every bit as perilous as you'd heard. Most were lucky to have even their bones exit the ruins. You don't currently belong to the guild. I recommend registering. You can get jobs there and learn skills. Clad in full armor, the Guildmaster Samuel Joseph stands in the center of the Guild Hall like a statue. He appraises you with a look and dismissively states that only worthless adventurers leave their equipment in disrepair. Your travels thus far have left your equipment positively thrashed. You resolve to rectify that before returning. The Guildmaster directs you to Morgan's Magic Item Shop. The magician is even able to repair magical equipment. To be deemed worthy by the Adventurer's Guild, you must first repair your broken equipment. You conquer a labyrinthine set of stairs, and Morgan Lisley, shopkeeper and witch, welcomes you to her establishment. There is no object's repair which does not fall under her purview, from ornate magic staves to rusted axes. Welcome to my shop. What would you like? Adventurers come here not only for repairs, but for appraisals and to purchase magic items. You will visit Morgan often. Your equipment is now unmarred. You should return to the guild and see if the guild master deems you worthy. Once again, the guild master Samuel Joseph stands in the center of the guild hall like a statue. With your equipment now in tip-top condition, you request to join the guild. Samuel issues you a test of skill. What will you do? Your test is to help a warrior named Roland. Samuel says that you can find him in the ancient temple ruins. To prove your mettle for the Guildmaster, you head to the ancient temple ruins to assist the warrior, Roland. A magic gate was recently found in the ruins on the outskirts of town. Use that to reach your destination. Many things lie within the ruins of the old Elysian Temple, some quiescent, some far huh? less so. An ancient dragon spoken of in myths is said to have destroyed the Elysian civilization in one night. You liberated a fairy that was trapped in a cage.
You have made your way to Roland. At the guild's behest, <clears throat> he is looking for adventurers who went missing in the ruins. <clears throat> for you to pass your guild exam, you must help him. Roland tells you to search in the ruins that are submerged in water. Much time has passed since the missing were last seen. He tells you to bring back their bones if they are found dead. Enemies! The Orc army is apparently getting here via the water route. Their cargo is various articles from ships that have been reported missing. You have found the bones of a missing adventurer. Sometimes, the dead have been known to leave behind a message right before they perish.
There seem to be more nests similar to this one spread throughout the area. You exit the area, taking care to avoid drawing the attention of any other harpies. You have fulfilled the request. Report your work to the Guildmaster. You return to the guild to report your quest. However, Samuel gives you an additional task. It is possible to resurrect the dead with their bones. He tells you to go to the temple to attempt the resurrection ritual. Canaan Temple is a temple dedicated to the worship of the goddess Althena. Proceed there immediately. You were ordered to attempt to resurrect guild members at Canaan Temple. As you enter, a kindly voice echoes from the back. You seem to be in need of help, a monk says, and approaches you. The prayer of the monk sometimes restores the dead to life. The goddess bestows mercy to those whose time has not yet come. Wandering one, how can I help you? Allow this heart to beat again. Quench their thirst. Lead the wandering soul back. Reverse death. And awaken them. The prayer reaches the goddess, and the pile of bones is made new. The adventurer pledges their allegiance to you as thanks.
Any adventurers you resurrect will wait for you at the inn. You can now fill out your party with those who are waiting at the inn. Please be aware that if you leave an area and one of your party has fallen, they will become lost. If you encounter any bones during your questing, be sure to bring them back and resurrect them so that they can assist you. You have fulfilled the request. Report your work to the Guildmaster. <gasps> After delivering your report, you think you see part of a smile cross Samuel's face. You are now registered with the Guild. You may now get cooperation from Guild members. They may participate in your party and help you in completing quests. The Adventurers Guild has a backlog of quests because many adventurers are occupied with the Dragon's Crown rumors. The King and his retinue left to find the Dragon's Crown and are missing. Many Guild members are now searching for them. The existence of this crown that supposedly controls dragons is disputed, but the King was obsessed with finding it. Samuel hurriedly assigns you a new task. You get the feeling that he deems you reliable and trustworthy. It's a request from this country's Prime Minister. The quest's details will be provided at the castle. You wonder about the lives of the powerful people in that grand castle. You happily accept the job. Hmm, you're back. You accepted a new request from the Guild. You must go to the castle for further details. <laughs> Flanked by guards, you are led through the secure castle. Princess Vivian and Prime Minister Gustav awaited you. The Prime Minister speaks a lot, in contrast to the Silent Princess. He asks you to swear to keep this matter secret. The Royal Scepter has been stolen. A witness who saw the thief described him as Tomet, a known bandit. Your job is to track down Tomet and retrieve the Scepter. Also, for the sake of the Kingdom, this must be kept secret. Rani whispers that he knows of this Tomet. He's well known and is based out of the old capital. You bow and leave the throne room. In order to retrieve the royal scepter, you chase the thief into the ruins of the old capital. These are the ruins of the ancient capital city. It was destroyed following an invasion from the Northern Empire. Now it is a dangerous place, full of dragons and wyverns.
You find the bandit Tomet in a hideout amid the ruins, just as Rani told you. It is said that whatever this man desires, by thievery he can acquire. Rani asks, are you Tomet, the bandit legend? Beaming, he displays his spoils and tells the tale behind each item. When you ask about the scepter, he says, that was indeed I and goes on to boast exactly how he got into the castle. When you inquire further about the scepter, he deduces your true intentions and darts away. Pursue the thief, apprehend him, and reclaim the scepter. You cannot capture a target swimming underwater. Watch for your quarry to surface. Turn. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Huh. 
pin down Tomit, who is so stunned that he's actually been caught, that he cannot move. Relenting, he produces the scepter from his bag and hands it to you. You have reclaimed the royal scepter, stolen from the treasure room of the castle. You must deliver the royal scepter to the Prime Minister at the castle. Allow this heart to beat again. Quench their thirst. Lead the wandering soul back. Reverse death. And awaken them. Allow this heart. Welcome to my shop. What would you like? Hmm, you're back. Once again, you are led to the throne room under guard. This time, a man stands there with a presumptuous grin. The man tells you to hand over the scepter. You tell him that you don't know what he's talking about. The man's mouth transforms into a twisted grin, and he signals his guards. They inch closer, swords at the ready. What will you do? You fall into a fighting stance. As soon as you steal yourself for battle, the Prime Minister and Princess burst in. The Prime Minister orders the guards near you to stand down. The man twirls his cape and leaves, as if nothing happened. You sigh, relieved that you didn't have to shed blood in the castle to resolve the problem. The Prime Minister tells you that man was Count Dean, the younger brother of the King. He is trying to usurp the throne. The scepter indicates the throne's heir. The Prime Minister says Dean had Tomit steal it to deny the princess the throne. 
The Prime Minister takes the scepter and narrows his eyes in satisfaction. He pays you for completing the request. The fairy you saved in the ruins appears before you. She seems to want to take you somewhere. The fairy leads you into an old, ivy-covered tower. You find yourself in a cluttered room that seems to be a laboratory. Judging by the stratification of dust, much time has passed since anyone last entered this room. Letters amidst the shambles indicate that a magician named Lucane lives here. You find a message he penned on the desk. Lucane wrote that he was off to see a magician friend named Wallace in the underground labyrinth. The fairy uses various interpretive gestures to indicate that she wants you to find him. You accept her job request. You head to Wallace's underground labyrinth to look for the magician Lucane. This underground labyrinth is said to have been made in a single night huh? with powerful magic. It is a dangerous place, replete with traps. It bars entry to all who would dare. I'll stop them. I got it. Oh, yes. The trap was sprung, and the door magically closed fast. <laughs> Slime creatures are weak against fire. The torch on the wall could be used to great effect. The clink of metal hitting the ground can be heard. Out of the blue, a mouse darts out and leaps onto your palm. The rodent claims to be the apprentice of Wallace the Magician. He says he was tasked with caring for the laboratory while Wallace was gone, but it is beset by malevolent magic users. When you ask about Lucane, the apprentice answers that his master's friend went into the labyrinth and hasn't returned. 
Your quest to find Lucane is delayed, as you attempt to liberate the lab for Ricky, the magician's apprentice. The door to the laboratory is through this hall. I got it! Simple! Oh, yes. Um. Because the laboratory was being misused, some of the experiments housed within have now run amok. There's been a population explosion of mutated beings that spread their spores around. The labyrinth is overrun by fungi. Hmm. Let's see. Voila! Hmm? Destroy the cocoons before they hatch, or they'll keep coming. Thank <laughs> you. 
You found some bones that seem to belong to Lucane in the depths of the labyrinth. The tattered raiments and jewelry leave no doubt that the corpse is indeed Lucane's. You bring back the bones of the magician Lucane. You found Lucane, but he was dead. You imagine the fairy will be overcome with grief, but you need to return to her. You stand before the goddess statues, Jula, Althena, and Vernas. These statues have all crumbled. Texts say the goddesses sacrificed themselves to defeat a dragon, which caused their likenesses to degrade as well. Althena, the one in the center, is the goddess of compassion, battle, and odyssey, making her popular with adventurers. If your party falls during your adventure, a prayer to Althena and a tithing of your money will resurrect the party. If you are repeatedly depending on her grace, the amount you must offer for her services will continually increase. When you enter the laboratory, the fairy frantically flits around you, as if it senses your uneasiness. Upon seeing Lucane's bones, the fairy enters into a panic. She begins tugging at your arm to get you to leave the tower. The fairy is apparently attempting to lead you somewhere. You collect Lucane's bones and follow her.
As you enter, a kindly voice echoes from the back. You seem to be in need of help, a monk says, and approaches you. You nervously hand the monk the bones of Lucane. Allow this heart to beat again. Quench their thirst. Lead the wandering soul back. Reverse death. And awaken them. The prayer reaches the goddess, and the pile of bones is once again given flesh. Lucane, shocked to find himself alive, thanks you profusely. He tells you to visit him at his laboratory and leaves. The resurrected magician has returned to the old tower in town. You decide to see him to ask more details. The magician Lucane is waiting for you in the laboratory of the old tower. It seems that dying had an adverse effect on his short-term memory. Lucane can't remember why he went to meet Wallace. Lucane is researching magic called runes, which are closely tied to spirits and fairies. Lucane introduces his fairy friend to you. Her name is Tiki. She left the fairy forest due to her strong curiosity. He thanks you again for saving him and allowing him to enjoy life's rich pageant. He displays his magic trinkets. Lucane says that he'd be happy to sell you these items at a fraction of the normal price and answer any questions you have. What will you ask? The magician Wallace was an old friend of Lucane's. He was known as a great magician. He sealed that group, or myopia of Cyclopes, in a labyrinth and saved the land. He also mentored young magicians in his tower. He was also the king's trusted advisor, and Lucane trails off. It seems that Lucane's memory has failed him again. Before you realize it, Tiki is following you around. She seems to have taken a liking to you. She will accompany you on your adventures henceforth. Fairies are known to be adept at finding hidden things. A letter from the castle has come to you via the guild. It simply says to report to the castle in all haste. Hmm, you're back. You assume that the letter was sent by the Prime Minister. Perhaps he has another request for you. Count Dean is waiting for you at the throne room. It is he who sent the letter. After your previous encounter, you can only assume that he's up to something nefarious. You brace for combat. The guards have drawn their swords and are blocking the exit. Count Dean starts talking to you in a soft voice. He says that he has personally requested your assistance in performing a task for him. He wants you to scout Bilberon Fortress on the border. This underground fortress is a well-known structure. Originally built to defend against the Orc army, it now lies in Orc hands. Scout them and learn their invasion routes. It is a very dangerous mission. But refusal means that you will be at the mercy of Dean's guards. You accept. Per Count Dean's request, you agree to infiltrate and surveil the subterranean fortress at the country's border. <laughs> The 
The Orc army presently controls Bilberon, the underground fortress built into the canyon. The king's army has been mounting a fierce offensive to try and reclaim the fortress. <gasps> You step into the enemy kitchen. A corpulent chef grabs a goblin instead of meat and suddenly stops. The cook, sensing your presence, stares directly at you. Luckily, her sight's not so keen, so she doesn't notice you. Eventually, the chef returns to her meat cutting. You use the goblin's screams to mask your escape. Simple. 
trouble. Let's see. Voila! Oh, I can do that. At the bottom of the stairs is an area connected to the sewers. This seems your most likely escape route. Defeating the Minotaur, you move through the sewer's filth. The reconnaissance mission went well. You gathered intel and slipped back across enemy lines. Among the treasures you claimed is the great sword of the hero Javelin.
You succeeded in acquiring intel on the underground fortress. This job will be completed once you report to Count Dean. Wandering one, how can I help you? As you leave the temple, his raspy voice makes it difficult for you to discern if he's even speaking your language. You can give him a coin if you feel pity for him. Of course, you're free to walk away as well. He doesn't even acknowledge the coin. Imagine Nog's Nidrashen. He mutters over and over. You probably won't be able to communicate with him no matter how long you strain your concentration. All right! Okay! Oh, yeah! Welcome to my shop. What would you like? You report everything you learn to Count Dean. Unfortunately, you also mention the hero's legendary sword. Naturally, he demands the great sword. But at least he's in a good mood now. He thought you'd just flee, but you didn't. It seems that he thinks much more highly of you now. Dean confides in you some of the problems in the castle. Once the king went missing, the Prime Minister began recommending the Archduke McNeil of Bolga to the throne. Bolga is an aggressive nation to the north. McNeil is related to the King of Hydland and has a legal claim to the throne. Count Dean claims that McNeil has been rallying nobles in Hydland to support his claim to the throne. That's why Dean hired Tomit to steal the scepter. He says that Tomit is extremely trustworthy, so long as he is paid. Suddenly, the Prime Minister and the Princess appear. It seems you are being watched. The Count glowers and departs. The Prime Minister warns you not to involve yourself any further. The Princess, as usual, looks back with blank eyes. Since you completed the job at the castle, you return to the Adventurer's Guild to tell them what transpired. <laughs> Roland also happens to be here to report on a job. However, Samuel is not here. Roland is waiting for him to return. Roland thinks that he just missed him and asks you to track down the Guildmaster and bring him back. You look for Samuel, the Guildmaster. He should be somewhere in town. Oh. 
A giant man in armor finishes his prayers and turns around. His pensive expression quickly turns fierce as he sees you. He tells you he was praying because he has sent many friends to look for the king, but they haven't found the slightest clue. When you ask to help, Samuel just nods and hands you a request form. It's the same request the temple gave you. In a remote region, Marriageable girls are disappearing one by one. The catacombs are believed to be linked somehow. As you leave the temple, a ragged old man slumped in the road calls out to you in a gravelly voice. His raspy voice makes it difficult for you to discern if he's even speaking your language. You can give him a coin if you feel pity. He doesn't even acknowledge the You probably won't be. To solve the mystery of the disappearances, you head to the catacombs where the villagers fear to tread. In the catacombs, huh? stark white bones are strewn about the ground as far as the eye can see. The sheer number of the deceased is the only indication left of this area's form of the stones. A strange knight stumbles out of the darkness towards you. You surmise that he is not of this world. The knight is muttering to himself as if in a daze. If I end my own life, they can no longer sacrifice me. When you move closer, the knight extends his hand. He's holding a scroll. When you accept it, the knight disappears. The path ahead of you is connected to the ruins of the castle colloquially called the Castle of the Dead. In olden times, whenever a girl disappeared, the locals would say she'd been called to the Castle of the Dead. Because ghosts are incorporeal, they are completely immune to physical attacks. Their weakness is light. 
torchlight will drive them off. Yes. Voila. Somebody help me. You saved a village girl. You must protect her now. I got it. Done. Yes, simple. Help me! You saved a village girl. You must Thanks. protect her now. My turn. Simple. Oh, I can do that. Outstanding. Let's see. Voila. The vampire smirks <laughs> and flies away. You saved a village girl. You must protect her now. Thank you. The village girl. If she is bitten by the others, she will become a vampire as well. <laughs> Oh, my 
The kidnapped girls had been turned. They are now vampires, attacking other people. You utter a silent prayer, hoping that you have slain the last vampire and leave the ruins. In your hands is the bloody scroll that the Ghost Knight had given you. You have unraveled the mystery of the village girl's disappearances. Obtain your reward at the guild. Wandering one, how can I help you? As you leave the temple, you can give him... He... you probably... As you leave the temple, you can give he you probably You are curious about the bloody scroll. You show Samuel the scroll and tell him what you saw in the catacombs. After examining the scroll, the signature and other details indicate that it is a letter from the king to the princess. It is a report telling her that he had obtained the dragon's crown. You wonder if this letter is true. You can't deny that the ghost was clad in mail that was eerily similar to the king's armor. So perhaps this is true. The king's death will profoundly affect the kingdom and neighboring lands. Samuel orders you to report it to the castle. Hmm, you're back. Stop! Immediately you are overwhelmed by guards and thrown into the castle jail, charged for a crime you did not commit. This is a common fate for people who hold a royal secret. You are being removed from the drama at the castle. After a few days, the cell door opens. Once your eyes grow reacclimated to light, you see Count Dean standing before you. 
He unshackles your ankles and explains the situation to you. The Prime Minister had been jailing all of Dean's allies. As expected, Gustav was working for Bolga. He used a magical necklace to control the princess and influence Heidland. Once Dean got Princess Vivian to safety and confronted the Prime Minister, Gustav fled with a ship full of treasure. The princess apologizes for involving you in this. While she was a hostage, Dean couldn't confront the Prime Minister. This kingdom needs a new ruler immediately. Dean is no saint, but he would make a good leader, you think. However, when Gustav fled, he also stole the royal orb, another treasure that represents the right to rule Hydland. If McNeil gets the orb, it will likely result in civil war. However, the orb does not appear to have reached Bolga. Princess Vivian asks for your help with this incident. You immediately agree and begin searching for the orb. Gustav's ship chose a pirate route, likely to elude captors. Perhaps his artifice was his undoing. You should investigate. To get the orb back, you travel to Ghost Ship Cove, a known pirate hideout. The inside of the cave connects to a fissure on the coastline. It seems large enough to contain another ocean. Sailors dread passing through this area. There are myriad tales of ships disappearing here. It's my turn. Done. <laughs> A beautiful voice in the sea calls out to you. You'd heard of Mermaid's legendary curiosity. She asks you many questions. From your conversation, you learn Gustav's ship was indeed attacked by pirates. That means pirates likely have the orb. According to the Mermaid, the pirates scattered throughout the islands use this area as a hub for trade amongst themselves. Rumors claim that among their treasures is a magic lamp that can call forth the demon.
I got it. Voila! They were being duplicitous. What? It was all a ruse. Everyone was spying on me the entire time. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> They're here. Right into the pirate's den. They're coming to attack you. The pirates have the magic wand. Your situation will turn quite dire if you don't take it from them. You have summoned for the genie. Don't let them take the lamb. Fourth of genie. Don't let them take the land. <laughs>
The magic lamp granted a wish and flew off. You find the orb stolen by the Prime Minister among the treasure the pirates left behind. You reclaim the stolen royal orb. Wandering one, how can I help you? As you leave the temple, a rat. His you can give he, you probably The princess and count can't contain their surprise. They'd already resigned themselves to the worst possible outcome. You've won a great deal of favor from the royal family. The princess smiles upon you, and Dean trusts you implicitly. The succession imbroglio has been dealt with. Once the king is buried and parliament approves, Dean will succeed the king. Still, the future king wears a somber expression. He knows Hydland still faces many difficult challenges. The Xingyak Orc tribe is pushing in from the east, and more tribes are joining their ranks. They're an ever-present menace. Also, while Hydland is currently at peace, Bulgo will surely strike if they sense an advantage. Worse still, the evil enchanters of the Mornion religion have cast their lot with the Bulgan threat. You are beginning to grasp why the last king of Hydland risked his life to find the dragon's crown. I need it, Dean mumbles quietly. After completing a large task, you return to a normal routine, fulfilling requests on behalf of the Adventurer's Guild. Whilst reviewing the outstanding requests at the guild, you spot one from the magician Lucane. It is about rune magic, but since you don't know too much about the subject, you're not sure what is requested. You tell Guildmaster Samuel that you'll accept this job and pay Lucane a visit to inquire about the details. Hmm, you're back.
You entered Lucane's tower to ask about his request. When you tell him that you have taken on his request, he immediately starts filling you in on the details. Certain Elysian ruins are highly regarded as a sacred area by monks. Unfortunately, monsters are desecrating these ruins. Monks were dispatched to purify the area, but the golems that used to protect the ruins have turned on the monks. Golems are controlled with rune magic. They asked Lucane to craft new golems with runes to pit against the old golems. So Lucane requested that someone go in his stead and use rune magic to craft golems. Do you comprehend how runes work? If you need an explanation, you can ask him. Lucane says that he would be delighted to discuss this and launches headlong into a discussion about runes. Runes are magical letters that spirits and fairies carved into the world. You may have seen them yourself. Touching runes makes letters sparkle and float. Runes are a combination of three characters that create various effects. However, runes won't work unless a spirit or fairy is present. That's what you gather from Lucane's long lecture. Lucane hands you a stone that has a rune carved into it. Activate the two runes on the statue and then add the stone's rune to cast the three-letter spell that animates it. You press forward and begin looking for runes. Oh, how can I help you? Which one? You head to the ancient temple ruins at Lucane's behest. There you need to animate statues using rune magic. In the Age of the Gods, mankind built a giant tower in a sacred place in an attempt to reach the world of the gods. That arrogance angered the gods, and it is said that the entire city was levied. Enemies! It's my turn. Done. Here they come. <laughs> You meet a female warrior monk who was injured in the battle against the demons. She was sent to purify this sanctuary. To purify this area, the holy seal must be placed upon the altar of the temple. She cannot walk, so the task falls to you.
Be careful. <laughs> Oh my! Oh, I can do that. <laughs> Come at me! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Do you still remember Lucane's lecture on rune activation? In order to defeat the golem blocking your path, you need to have a golem of your own. The demons notice the statue coming to life and have come to disrupt your work. Protect your golem so that it does not get destroyed before it what? reaches the temple. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
A maleficent stone tablet has been placed high upon the altar in the center of the temple. When you remove it and replace it with the holy seal, the ruins are purified with a blinding light. You decide to take the evil-looking stone tablet back with you. You can feel unspeakable evil emanating from the stone tablet you removed from the altar. Perhaps Lucane should examine it. Wandering one, how can I help you? May they rest in peace. 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 Allow the... As you leave the temple, a... his rasp, you can give him a... He, you probably... You report your success to Lucane. He smiles and tells you to keep the runestone to use in your adventures. Now you can view research materials about rune magic whenever you need. You can also buy runestones from Lucane. You produce the stone tablet you brought back from the temple ruins. He swallows hard and examines the tablet. The ancient demon script is difficult for even Lucane to read. He can only deduce that it is a contract of some sort. Upon further examination, Lucane finds something he can read. The name of the demon king, Magino Gusna Idrashin. The name jogs your memory. You've heard it before, but where? Lucane cannot tell anything else about the tablet. Oh, how can I help you? Which one? The name of the demon king, Magino Gusna Idrashin. You're positive you heard that name somewhere in town. 
Wandering one, how can I help you? The old man grows excited when you walk by. He grabs the tablet. You now remember him mumbling the Demon King's name earlier. When you try to take the tablet back, the old man chants a spell. Instantly, the stone tablet crumbles to dust. You stand there gobsmacked when the old man thanks you in a calm, clear voice. He continues his story. We had obtained the crown of Alicia, known as the Dragon's Crown. However, it had no power to control the dragons. Those legends were myths to lionize the Elysian king. The crown in the ruins was merely decorative. However, I decided that I would infuse the crown with the power the legend spoke of. It would be my life's work. To do this, I would go to any lengths. I collaborated with shadowy cabals and sold my soul to the Demon King for power. Without the tablet, the crown's power will now vanish. The religion that used me cannot control the ancient dragons. The old man tells you in closing that he is the magician Wallace. In the next moment, he appears to melt into the air. The magician Wallace who disappeared is Lucane's friend. You must tell him of this surprising encounter. You tell Lucane everything that transpired with Wallace, the tablet, and the dragon's crown. Lucane is listening intently to your story when he suddenly bolts upright. All of his lost memories have returned to him. It was Wallace who killed Lucane. He asked Lucane to come to the labyrinth so he could steal Lucane's black rune stones. Those rune stones are special runes that make a teleportation gate. They're said to be made by a fairy with ancient powers. Wallace was used to open a gate to the illusionary land. The ancient dragon sleeps there, a land the goddess sealed. The shadowy religion must have wanted to be able to control that giant dragon. They shared Wallace's goal. Even rumors of this organization having the power of dragons would be chaotic. You can't just hope it will never be found. Lucane says that if the crown were to be anywhere, it would certainly be in the Mage's Tower. Morneon took over the Mage's Tower, likely because it housed many types of research, as well as Wallace's laboratory. Oh, how can I help you? You infiltrate the Mage's Tower to find the Dragon's Crown. The Mage's Tower, once greatly admired by magicians as a bastion of wisdom. It now embodies all the fears Highland has of being conquered by the rebel forces which conspire against it. Oh, 
I can do that. A half-naked woman is lying in a dark corner bound by a chain. Looking closer, you discover she's a kidnapped spirit. The followers of Morneon seem to be capturing as many spirits and fairies as they can find to power their rune magic. Rune magic gates have been opened many times in this tower, and the magicians are even traveling to the illusionary land. The spirit finishes her story with a bone-chilling revelation. They have awakened the ancient dragon. After freeing the spirit, you go into the room of one of the Morneon leaders. The leaders had already concealed themselves, sensing your presence in the tower. The road ends here. Molten Rock bars any further progress forward. <laughs> Tiki finds a rune carved into a stone coffin.
The molten lava attacks you as if it is alive. Steer the magic carpet and keep it from burning. that the magicians use has a special characteristic. Look at the colors of the orbs. The warlock has begun a high level incantation. Beware! successful in slaying one of the Morneon leaders. However, you didn't find the dragon's crown inside the mage's tower. On the warlock's corpse, you found the black rune stones that were taken from Lucane. However, one was completely destroyed. You must return the black rune stones you acquired to Lucane. Wandering one, how can I help you? Lucane was quite worried about your safety. 
and flashes a relieved smile when he sees you return. You give him the two black rune stones you found. Nobody should be able to enter the illusionary lands now. You tell Lucane that you didn't find the dragon's crown, and what the spirit told you about the ancient dragon. There are many legends about the ancient dragon, but no one knows any specifics. Lucane suggests seeking a specialist. Lucane has an old friend who once researched the ancient dragons. He currently lives as a hermit in the Lost Woods. They had a falling out long ago, and they are not on good terms. It seems you'll have to see him in Lucane's stead. He owes a debt to the late king. He is hard-headed, but he honors his debts. Lucane writes a letter to the castle. First, you must go to the castle and ask King Dean to write an official letter asking for the hermit's cooperation. Oh, how can I help you? Which one? You must ask King Dean to write a formal letter asking the Hermit to cooperate with your mission. You request an audience with King Dean. However, an anxious-looking Princess Vivian appears instead. Upon inheriting the throne, Dean left the castle with some subordinates and hasn't returned. You brush it aside, reasoning that Dean must have some sort of plan. You assuage the princess's worries. She asks why you're here, and you tell her you need a letter to take to the hermit. She drafts a royal request for you. Vivian gives you a letter asking for the hermit's aid. You must go into the Lost Woods and learn about the ancient dragon. <laughs> The Adventurer's Guild has forbidden the use of the gate and the ruins are sealed. You should ask Samuel what happened. The Adventurer's Guild has forbidden the use of the gate and the ruins are sealed. You should ask Samuel what happened. You ask the Guildmaster why the magic gate on the outskirts of town has been sealed off. Samuel says the gate had become unstable, and it was impossible to know where you'd end up, so he had it sealed. Perhaps the gate's appearance was a side effect of Morneon's gate rune usage. It may be tied to the crumbled rune stone. But you have no choice. 
You tell Samuel that you'll accept the risk and coerce him into allowing you to use the gate. Samuel relents, but also suggests going to the stable and renting a horse as an alternative. You can travel by horse or magic. However, the gate will now drop you at a random location unlike before. Hmm, you're back. You venture into the Lost Woods to ask the Hermit about the ancient dragon. The Lost Woods are so vast and similar looking that you quickly lose track of where you are. It is said that only the hermit who lives here actually knows the land of this forest. You turn around. You see a man standing upon a rock. He immediately shouts, I don't want trouble! When you hand him the letter and explain your purpose, he grins confidently. He says the ancient dragon can't be revived. The ancient dragon sleeps in the illusionary lands as a fossil. It's impossible to go there, much less awaken the dragon. He tosses you several tomes and tells you to read them if you want to learn. Then he points to the path exiting the forest. You take a boat across the underground what? lake, as the hermit advised. <laughs> this seems like the safest way to leave the lost woods. <laughs> If your boat is caught by a whirlpool, it will be destroyed. Avoid the whirlpools at all costs.
Yes. Done. A gazer's may not can nullify your magic set. Beware! Oh! <laughs> 
to defeat the extra-dimensional magical being known as a gazer. It dawns upon you that this is no safe route. In fact, this is likely the most dangerous route. You brought back the tomes on the ancient dragon that the hermit threw your way. The books you borrowed from the Hermit are packed with research about the ancient dragon. Have Lucane look at them. Wandering one, how can I help you? Welcome to my shop. What would you like? Which one do you want? Immediately, you and Lucane pour through the books on the ancient dragon. It is tough reading. Lucane summarizes for you. The illusionary lands are a great land, where the ancient dragon is sealed, along with Elysia's fortress. It is an immortal dragon born alongside the deities. The goddess fossilized it and made it sleep for time indefinite. All the tomes seem to corroborate that general idea, but a particular line in one of the books jumps out at you. When the current Elysian king is sacrificed, the spell will be broken, and the ancient dragon will rise from its slumber. The memory of your meeting with the late king pops into your mind. He spoke of preventing himself from being sacrificed. King Dean's safety does not appear to be a given anymore. You speed to the castle, hoping against hope that he's there. Oh, how can I help you? Frantically, your mind offers myriad silent prayers to any deity you've ever heard of. You rush to meet King Dean. <laughs> Once again, only the princess appears before you. Vivian seems to have been waiting for you. 
She shows you a letter. I write this letter in the event something untoward transpires. The letter begins. You begin bracing for the worst. Dean's letter continues. I'm departing for a liaison with representatives of Morneon to obtain the dragon's crown. Hydland is in grave peril, and though I have reservations, I have accepted Morneon's terms to serve the greater good. You now know the sum of all your fears has been realized. Morneon lured him to the illusionary lands and sacrificed him. A spark of hope arises. The illusionary lands have been sealed off. Perhaps the dragon won't be a threat to the realm. Unfortunately, Lucane immediately extinguishes your spark of hope. He opens a dusty volume and directs you to a passage. The ancient dragon will gradually regain its strength. When at full strength, it will have dominion over all magic. This includes the rune magic that holds it prisoner. There is no escaping it. The ancient dragon threatens all life. It's only a matter of time before the ancient dragon regains its strength and can leave the illusionary lands. The ancient dragon must be stopped before it regains its strength. However, the dragon is nigh invulnerable now. Lucane points to an image in the book and tells you to look for talismans. They will weaken the dragon's defenses. The Elysian King received these nine gems from the goddess Althena. The nine talismans are scattered throughout the world. Only the strongest and the most diligent will find them. You must go to each area and overcome a difficult trial to collect the talismans. You need the nine talismans to defeat the ancient dragon. <laughs> Many things lie within the ruins of the old Elysian Temple, some quiescent, some far less so. An ancient dragon spoken of in myths is said to have destroyed the Elysian civilization in one By the time you arrive at the battle, Roland has already vanquished the last of the foes. He lives up to his legend. Roland works through this region alone, never teaming up. You have gained insight into the ruins by talking to him. Which path will you take? Ha! <laughs> 
Very wary of Medusa's eyes. Anyone who meets her gaze is turned to stone. No! To avoid suffering a stony fate, you must not look into her eyes. If you find the going difficult, consider ducking into a building to recuperate. Medusa turns to stone and crumbles into dust. This act of vengeance should assuage some of the anger of those unfortunate souls that she petrified. The Green Talisman. You need eight more talismans to defeat the ancient dragon. underground labyrinth was created by the magician Wallace in a single night. It is said that fearsome monsters are held captive in the depths of this hazardous trap-filled maze. It's 
my turn. I got it. Oh, yes. The trap was sprung, and the door magically closed fast. The slime creatures are weak against fire. The torch on the wall could be used to great effect. The clink of metal hitting the ground can be heard. You obtain the magic key to open the door. Suddenly, a rodent darts out and begins talking. Ricky, the magician's apprentice, needs your help once again. He says that wayward wizards have waylaid the labyrinth again. There must be a reason mages keep attacking. Which path will you take? You learn that the labyrinth was built to contain the Cyclopes. Huh? Pursue the magician with the key. They must be trying to open the door to the prison. Oh! <laughs> 
what? Spot the stolen key lying next to the crushed corpse of the magician. It's clear how he met his demise. The door to the prison is wide open. If you shut the door before the other cyclopes stand through, you may still have a chance to control the situation. Put the key in the heel in front of the cell to contain the cyclopes. The Cyclopes are furiously resisting your attempts to close the door. The Cyclopes are furiously resisting your attempts to close the door. The Cyclopes are furiously resisting your attempts to close the door. You were able to lock and seal the Cyclopes' prison once again. Ricky, the magician's apprentice, is elated and gives you a handsome reward. You obtained the Aqua Talisman. You need seven more times. Wandering one, how can I help you? Allow the... The Orc army presently controls Bilberon, 
the underground fortress built into the canyon. The king's army has been mounting a fierce offensive to try and reclaim the fortress. It's my huh? turn. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> you step into the enemy kitchen. A fat cook angrily barks at you, yelling that the food isn't ready yet. She seems to be mistaking you for a hungry recruit. You can play along to glean information or leave quietly. Which path will you take? The king's army, in trying to breach the impregnable gargoyle gate, is suffering many casualties. Hmm? You decide to join in the skirmish and support the king's army's attempt to break through the gate. Step into the bloody chaos where both armies are exchanging blows and cannon fire. Just beyond here is the notorious Gargoyle Gate. A gate this solid cannot be destroyed without a massive cannon. Use the King's Army's cannon to breach it. <gasps>
before they can destroy it. <laughs> the soldiers of the King's army praise you and your team for conquering an important gate of the underground fortress. The fight will continue until the fortress is regained, but you have assisted as much as you personally can. the orange talisman. You need six more talents? Wandering one, how can I help you? Welcome. 
Welcome to my shop. What would you like? The Lost Woods are so vast and similar looking that you quickly lose track of where you are. It is said that only the hermit who lives here actually knows the way out of this forest. Sensing a presence, you turn around. You see a man standing on a rock. The grouchy-looking hermit asks you if you are brave. Two paths leave the forest, he shouts. The path of the coward and the path of glory, which leads to a vicious monster. Which path will you take? You have heard rumors of the violent monster before. They're coming. Many northern knights lost their lives challenging this beast. <laughs> Yes. 
Oh, yeah. Terrifying killer rabbit has breathed its last, thanks to your efforts. A familiar voice congratulates you, saying, Now glory is yours. You obtained the Black Talisman. You need five more talismans to defeat the ancient dragon. Wandering one, how can I help you? Allah.
Hmm. Oh, yeah! <laughs> In the catacombs, stark white bones are strewn about the ground as far as the eye can see. The sheer number of the deceased is the only indication left of this area's own A strange knight stumbles out of the darkness. He pays you no heed and walks right past you. The knight is muttering to himself. You strain your ears, but all you can make out is the Death God is coming. Which path will you take? When you step onto the walkway, the night disappears like smoke. The path back is inaccessible. The situation leaves you anxious. Find an escape route. Wraiths are invincible, and you have no hope of defeating one. <laughs> to overcome the power of the Death God, you must rely on the Goddess to save you. Only the light shown by the angel statue will expose the wraith's weakness. Divine light shines forth, exposing the wraith's only weakness, the dream heart. Divine light fades, and hopelessness once again darkens your heart. 
Divine light shines forth, exposing the Wraith's only weakness, the Dream Heart. Divine light fades, and hopelessness once again darkens your heart. Divine light shines forth, exposing the Wraith's only weakness, the Dream Heart. Destroy the Dream Heart and send the Wraith back to the Underworld. You cannot destroy death, the opposite of life. You should rejoice in the fact you even still draw breath. You obtained the Yellow Talisman. You need four more talismans to defeat the ancient dragon. Wandering one, how can I help you? Wandering one, how can I help you?
The inside of the cave connects to a fissure on the coastline. It seems large enough to contain another ocean. Sailors dread passing through this area. There are myriad tales of ships disappearing here. It's huh? my turn. <laughs> A beautiful voice in the sea calls out to you. You'd heard of the mermaid's legendary curiosity. She asks you many questions. She wandered into these shallow waters after being chased by a kraken. She says the kraken should still be nearby. Which path will you take? The kraken lurks in the cave and attacks ships that pass through the area. You throw caution to the wind and fling your party headlong into a confrontation against the Kraken. The stranded ship starts moving. Something is pulling the ship from beneath the water. The wounded Kraken flees deep into the cave. Now's your chance! You inch closer to the Kraken's lair. The Kraken has wrapped its tentacles around stalactites, 
and is trying to destroy the king. Strike a death blow to the Kraken that had been terrorizing the sea. Many sailors will certainly raise a toast in your honor once word of your victory gets out. You obtained the Red Talisman. You need three more talismans to defeat the ancient dragon. Welcome to... What would you like? Lucane tried his best to fix the broken black rune stone, but the task was beyond his capabilities. Without the gate, you cannot enter the illusionary lands. Even with all the talismans, you'll be unable to stop the dragon. There isn't a spirit left that could create a rune like this. The runes only survived by being used sparingly. Haven't you seen this rune somewhere, though? Seek it. Once you find it, you can reach the illusionary lands. Oh, how can... which one?
back. The Mage's Tower, once greatly admired by magicians as a bastion of wisdom. It now embodies all the fears Hydran has of being conquered by the rebel forces which conspire against him. It's my turn. Done. <laughs> The followers of Morneon seem to be capturing as many spirits and fairies as they can find to power their rune magic. The spirit tells you about the terrible experiments going on in this tower. It seems that they're fusing monsters together. Which path will you take? You can access the laboratory in the upper levels of the tower by using the hidden elevator.
The frantic researcher seems to have abandoned his experimentation and run off. The contents of the beaker are shaking uncontrollably. They feel as if you could put a hole through them at any moment. Chimera, unable to move around in such a confined space, died, curled up on itself. The continued production of these monsters will only cause great harm to the kingdom. You obtain the White Talisman. You need two more talismans to defeat the angel. Wandering one, how can I help you? All right! Oh, 
here. Hmm. In the age of the gods, mankind built a giant tower in a sacred place in an attempt to reach the world of the gods. That arrogance angered the gods, and it is said that the entire city was leveled. It's my turn. Done. What? You meet a female warrior monk who was injured in the battle against the demons. She was sent to purify the sanctuary. A ritual to summon the demon king is underway. She must place the holy seal in the temple to seal the demon king again. Which path will you take? To prevent the resurrection of the Demon King, you decide to stop the threat at the source by crushing the ritual. <laughs> the Demon Realm, reaching of the Human Realm, is causing an earthquake, and the ruins are crumbling. <laughs> The magic circle you discover is most likely being used as part of the ritual. Accidentally touched the magic circle and have been transported to the demon realm. The Demon King is still struggling to break free from his bondage. With his power sealed, you may still be able to banish the Demon King. Shouts bitter invectives at you until judgment has been rendered upon you once again. Filthy loop. 
go. It's my turn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Unfortunately, the next highest ranking demon then appeared. Hot on your heels. have prevented the Demon King's resurrection and assisted in defeating his top demon, the Archdemon. The Town Temple will certainly inscribe your name as a savior to be remembered throughout the ages. You obtained the Blue Talisman. You need one more talisman to defeat the ancient dragon. All right. Boom, yeah. All right. These are the ruins of the ancient capital city. It was destroyed following an invasion from the Northern Empire. Now it is a dangerous place, full of dragons and wyverns. What? It's my turn. Uh, 
Tomet is surprised by the sudden nature of your visit, but relaxes. He demands coin in exchange for his help. The red dragons nest in the ruins, sleeping amongst mountains of treasure. You ask the thief for more details. Which path will you take? The area reeks of sulfur, and earth-shaking snoring reverberates throughout. When you're ready, move on. The red dragon is nigh. Turn. Done. Let's see. Voila. The red dragon has awoken from its slumber. Fiery breath. Ready your shield! Fiery breath. Ready your shield! Fiery breath. Ready your shield! You have 
defeated the Red Dragon, said to be the strongest creature known to man. Your name will command respect for all time. Bear your new title proudly, Dragon Slayer. You obtained the Purple Talisman. Do you remember the rule? Wandering one, how can I help you? It's the rune you needed. The three special runes react with each other and connect to the illusionary lands. You step forth into the illusionary lands. The goddess's powers of resurrection cannot reach you here. Seize the day! <laughs> <laughs> 